it feels like it has to be so regular. But once again, there was the simple versus Zywu uh, comparison uh, that popped up on Reddit not too long ago, right? Where their stats now are identical in uh, almost every respect, that, like freakishly identical at this point uh, in terms of like where they are 700 something maps later, Zywu and simple, same performance. The one thing that I wanted to say is that, um, okay, fine, they have the same support, same performance. And again, the French scene are ragging on Vitality because they do tend to drop off when they get deeper into tournaments. And that's why I, I kept betting on them the deeper they went. I kept betting against them the deeper they went into Rio because I kept expecting them to flop because that's what they do. And so I went ahead and took a quick gander real quick just to see, okay, but what are the results, right? Who's got the more trophies? Who's actually achieved I mean, that's more? That's going to be easy. It's going to be and there you go, easily. right? It's just simple, one major, 17 notable trophies, and this is from HLTV. Zero, zero majors, eight notable trophies. So he's not even at half of what Simple has got in terms of major, in terms of trophies, and he doesn't have a major. So it still isn't apple. It still isn't apples to apples here in terms of comparison. Like we need Zero to and be also, getting these trophies to start saying like, okay, he is legitimately better than Simple. It's like he needs to start winning some stuff. This might sound like a subtle point, but the point the point people always miss is this, Samla. If you ever look, like I notice on this particular comparison you gave me here in the document, it's like roughly. It looks like they've tried to make like the same amount of maps played or something roughly. Like if you look at the difference, but obviously Simple's part of the reason he has more trophies. He's played many more years than Zero. He's probably played like twice as long, right? The other part that people always miss is this because i've seen ziwu fans for real sadler take stats that show that over their whole careers ziwu is like a tiny bit above simple and it's like simple's played twice as much do you understand that yes. if i'm a tiny bit worse than you i played twice as much against the best in the world i'm actually a, quite a bit better than you because there's no guarantee you will do that when you play twice as many maps. And also, the more sample size, the harder it is to get that number. So even though, by the way, this is this is one of those ones where there's no bad player. Like, obviously, Z was fucking unbelievable. But the point is, if you come at fucking simple, you can't miss in any category. Like, as you're saying here, Sam, like, realistically, the only people who can come at simple is usually people from the resume angle. Because, first of all, no one has the stats. Actually, Z was the only one with the stats to do it. But it, it obviously, most people judge everything. Everything about a person's career, right? It's, it's a career resume and the play and, and other factors, how you play the game, what your image is and all that shit. But yeah, so I just thought it's a bit whack because the problem I have is this. I was there when Simple hadn't won those tournaments, Semla. You remember once upon a time, Simple was the one in this position. He had the stats that said maybe he's better than Cold Zera, but Cold Zera had all the majors and all the MVPs and all the trophies. Mm -hmm. Well, the point is, everyone in the scene, it wasn't me. I even used to say back then, like, yeah, but you know, individually, you might be as good. Everyone's like, ah, who cares? Win a major, bitch. Win the tournaments. Well, then why doesn't Zewu do it? Why does Zewu get a pass for not winning these trophies, by the way? Because one thing I do want to say when people tell me that, like, obviously, he just won a tournament. Now, that's great. But before this tournament, Tournament. It wasn't even in any of the semis or the finals. And everyone's telling me he's the best player of the year. Yeah, because guess what? His stats are easier to get because he doesn't play the winner of the tournament. He doesn't play the team in the semifinals that fucking knocks you out. So I think on that topic, like, I can see both sides. Like, I do think Zewu is one of the only players who can be compared to Simple. I think he's one of the only ones who's even in the convo and he can make a case for it. It's just as you say. It's like he's still got some things to do. If he really wants to be Simple, guess what? Simple wasn't Simple after two or three years. It took him a while to develop this amazing career. And quite frankly, yeah, it is cool if you can win the trophies as well. It's a great way to just round it out, isn't it? And oh, also, yeah, let's be real, whether he wins one or not, I, I've got to at least see you go deep in a major, mate. I'm just going to say this one more time. Do people know that Zewu has never played a semi of a major? Like, I'm not hitting on the guy, but at least give me one, bro. Just give me, remember, in his first year, Simple played in the semi in the final. He was on fucking Team Liquid. There's yeah. another thing. Don't talk shit like, yeah, but look at the team. He was playing with Nitro and fucking Adrenaline. Exactly, he had the dude, semis, the major. The like, that's pretty good, you know? Like, half those players wouldn't even play, like, two years later. So, what do you want? Like, so, yeah, come on, Z. They, uh, by the way, perfect timing, though. We can segue this. Because you've just won that tournament, and you are on a good team. Like, let's be real. If I tell you, he's easily a top two or three team. This is your chance. It's the last major. Let's go out with a bang. And have, this would even track. Like he's had a lot of chances, but he hasn't. It would be so cool if the last major Z has just a mega hard carry performance. Win or lose and goes to the semis. I think that would just be a really cool way to end the game for this great discussion, right? Well, I mean, we could actually kind of segue this and just give some quick thoughts because I'm sure you're going to be talking about this with uh, Maui on Snake and Banter and uh, Hot Takes. I'm sure you guys are going to be going into detail on uh, the, the, the Rio event. But we could actually just give it some, yeah, some thought cool. on this one because do you think like... Do you think that they're that they're what they have going for him is a sustainable scenario? Because it seems like Zaiwu, he's reliable. It's he he can keep delivering. He doesn't have his overpowering performances 
in these uh, in these deeper maps where he's just completely and utterly dominating the way he will earlier on in the in the in the group stages or early into the playoffs. But what happened and what obviously ruined my bets is that now all of a sudden you had Dupree coming out of nowhere and dropping 39 frags on Vertigo to keep his team in the tournament. You had Spinks putting on a career event. Utterly unreal performance out of Spinks. Nobody saw that coming. I mean, you don't expect that out of even the very best. It's like, okay, oh, if sure. Nico puts that on, like, okay, fine, fair enough. We're talking yeah. about Nico. But for Spinks to show up and put on that level of performance, he was, he was, he's right up there with like the likes of Axel and Nico and the other, the yes. best riflers in the world. That was an absolutely bonkers performance from Spinks. So do you think that they actually, do you think that this is sustainable or do you think that this was a one-off because it was Rio, you know, it's not as much pressure. It's not that big of a prestigious event. You didn't necessarily have everybody there. Do you think, do you, do you think that that played into their mental and they were able to overperform because of it? Or could we expect to see this kind of performance from them at the major? The problem is, I actually think the Sphinx one, look, I don't know that he'd have as good as that, because like you say, basically that was like one of the best rifle performances of like <laughs> the last year or two. Like, like you say, he's up there with Axel and Nico and the absolute best riflers. I wouldn't expect quite that level, but I do think if you look at this year, Sphinx had started to level his game up, unlike some of his problems last year. Also, because Enz, his former team, and Vitality are actually two of the teams where I have a better relationship with the in-game leads. I've been able to talk with them privately about players like Sphinx and find out what they think's going wrong or what, what did he do in your team. And the gist I've gotten basically was when Spinks was in ends because they sort of knew he's clearly the best player and they built the team around that what they essentially did was they gave him like almost like the green light as a lurker where they would almost play as a group away from him and he could just do what he wanted he could try to choose the timing when he attacks when he flanks when he holds and if you do that by the way a lot of lurkers have done this in history. They'll get their absolute best amount of kills. Happy, blame F. We all know the famous ones. The problem is when he came to Vitality, it looks like they wanted him to be more part of like a team unit approach. Or and so I think what's happened is they've basically just taken time and they've figured out something akin to what they did in ENS. Like they've sort of integrated Spinks better. So I could, that's a big positive because if Spinks can play not even to this level, say he plays like 85% of this level, then they're going to be a team that has a chance again. You're going to have two good players. You can you can win tournaments. The problem is, it's the one you nailed. It's the Dupree one that I don't buy, mate. Not mm -hmm. only was that performance, by the way, the only reason they stayed in the tournament, they would have been out in the semis if that match happened that way. But also, I'll throw this in as well. For the whole tournament, his actual rating was ridiculous. I think he ended with like a 1.10 rating or something, mate. That, Dupree hasn't been on that level of vitality the whole time, mate. So that part does not feel sustainable. So that did feel like a one-off and he just had like a legendary performance in one game and then a slightly elevated level. That's what I'm suspicious about. So essentially, I don't think they can be as good as they were here, but I do still think they're a solid dark horse for the major. Like I think if I had to rank teams in order, vitality would be maybe like my fourth team to win the major. So they've still got a good chance to do it. They're still, I mean, right now they're currently ranked two on HLTV. I mean, it's just because they won the tournament. That's just how it works. Remember, yeah, the problem yeah. in the modern day that people have to remember is with the old circuit, we had so many events and so many tier two events as well that you sort of did an aggregate. Whereas in these ones, if like if we have a one massive event, whoever wins or comes second is automatically going to be top three almost. You know, it's just the way there's, there's not a big enough sample size nowadays, is there? Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it's just it's just going to wait these tournament events. So, I mean, you have Heroic as number one right now. Vitality is number two. Navi is number three. And G2, four. And Phase five. I mean, these are... By the way, doesn't that Heroic awesome. one really tell the story of their team, mate? They are number one because if you aggregate all the tournaments, dude, they're in every final. The problem is they don't fucking win them. That's the, that's the bummer. Because, by the way, the worst position you can ever be in in any game is you are number one ranked, but you don't win. You're just consistently second. Like, that's the nightmare. Everyone knows that's the fucking ultimate nightmare because you're this close, but you're also that far away, if you know what I mean. It's the worst yeah. feeling in the world. And by the I way, see. even though I know social media managers have to do this shit, shout out to the heroic Twitter guy who did do that tweet of Cadia before the final. Like, we're not losing this one. It's like, well, how's your milk today? <laughs> 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 Definitely. I know you have to do it. I know you do. It's whatever. It's not like it's the players tweeting that. Fair enough. It was just social media. But I, I laughed at least. <laughs> Dude, I was just livid this whole tournament. Just these, these, these results driving me up the wall completely. I will say I was slightly mean when I did that tweet where I put, cause there was a tweet where it was like Cadian, like bragging about just it was some clip of him on like Gowles' show or something like begging fans to like support uh -huh. them in the final. And I was like, no wonder they love heroic in Brazil. They love fucking losers over there. Just <laughs> <What else? laughs> <laughs> 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 some naughty angle like that, you know, you know, the classic one, you know, the classic. Oh, then, then again, Canadian, maybe they have actually accepted you. You are an honorary Brazilian because you also don't win tournaments in Brazil. <laughs>
Because I was like, remember that's the other stat. By the way, how was that age, Semler? Remember when I told everyone last three or last year, Brazilian teams don't magically get a boost and win the event. They've never done anything. Even Furia, like, by the way, they actually, people don't know, they could have, they could for real have been fucking deep at the sun, but as usual, it's Furia, isn't it? They always let you down. They always let you down somehow, mate. Oh, so disappointing. Because they could have beaten Heroic if people don't. That was a great match, wasn't it? Yeah, and then uh, yeah, that was a great match, and I actually had them to beat. Uh, I had them to beat uh, heroic. I had them to beat Cloud Nine. I thought that they would actually take Cloud Nine as well in the upper bracket final. Because I mean, again, Cloud Nine, a little shaky, not quite there, and it turned into a three mapper, and Cloud Nine got it on Ancient. But uh, so that was painful already. But then you know that wasn't Furia out. That was just seeding. So fair yeah. enough. But then the quarterfinals come along, and I had I had Furia to upset heroic. I had him to I had him to take it. Shit, I even put uh, I even had big. I kind of in hindsight, it's like. A little bit of a stretch on that one, sure. but I even had Big taking Vitality. No, but that was also because if people don't know, the odds we got for Big were like three point five or something. Insane. So we all know Big is a good upset team. Yeah, it, it was worth was it was worth rolling the dice on that one, man. That, that it was, was 16, 12, 16, 12. I mean, yeah, come on, they didn't fine. blow them out. It was it, Big put up a fight, but uh, in hindsight, you're just like, hmm, yeah, maybe need to rethink that one. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or you know, be a pleb and don't.